Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Once upon a time, there were three bad boys with a podcast. <laughs> I'm Mally Moore. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm at the Ricka stove. <laughs> I'm nothing without your touch, my love. I'm nothing without your kiss. To spend each night in your arms, my flower <laughs> is my idea of bliss. To hear your voice each <sighs> day is to die seven times by God's wrath. <sighs> if I was anything other than human, I want to be the water in your bath. <sighs> Till then, my love, I'm Nathan Simmons, and this is the Silver Linings <laughs> Playlist, the show where we try to find the <laughs> Silver Linings in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And guys, it's Prince Day! Like, Nathan, can you, can you, can you say that shit to DC before we start recording? <laughs> like, that's between you guys. That was our private conversation, Nathan. You shouldn't have let that let Yeah, I didn't not, I actually forgot Mal was on the call <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, i've never wanted so badly to have like a gun cock sound effect on the soundboard <laughs> than right now but yeah um nathan i only have one question for you yeah. uh what the fuck <laughs> I, I, follow up mm -hmm. what the fuck is it with you <laughs> Yeah, I love this movie. Uh, it's also a bad movie. Oh. I think that both of those things can be true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, this was, I think this might have been one of the first movies that I put on the list this season. I think you're right. And I am glad I did it because I think, how, Dustin, how far into the movie were you when you tweeted, this might be the worst movie you've ever seen? Not far. Okay. Very not, very not far. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I, I mean, it, Wait, had, look. Uh, question, had Prince finished climaxing in the opening <laughs> scene before you tweeted When that? he's edging himself on the piano? Uh, yes. I, I think it was during... Uh, Chris and Scott Thomas's drum solo. Oh, Planet Rock. You yeah. just can't stop. Uh, also, I have one... Okay, well, first off, that's the best scene in the movie. <laughs> I have one uh, critique, Nathan. I think you got the name of the podcast wrong in your introduction because this is... As our listeners will know, this is clearly the two bros and not an Intel podcast. Oh, sure. That you're listening oh, to. yeah, 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 yeah. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I have to say, I this movie, while terrible, I, I am glad that we are... On the other side of Promising Young Woman and now into just let's be goofy as shit for I yeah. will I will say not to do another correction, but you also got the oh, name I'm wrong, sorry, Dustin. It's actually two bros and the co host formerly known as an insult. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. It it actually not to not to correct your correction of my correction, but it's actually uh two bros and then like a symbol of an yeah. incel. Like it's been <laughs> Oh, so I have a fun story about the like the if you go to the Oh no. No <laughs> the I, I'm guys, I love Prince. Mm -hmm. I think I think a lot of this movie uh, how you will take this movie and we'll get into it. I think it has to do with uh, your attachment to him as a as a an icon mm -hmm. and, and if you're not like super into prince which you know everybody has different tastes um i think that th this i think your mileage will severely vary watching this movie yeah yeah <laughs> my mileage was like an h2 hummer like it, it didn't get very far i think an h2 hummer is what prince was getting in the opening scene of this movie Ew. hey that's really good <laughs> Uh, no, I I have to say, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for it. I'm not the biggest Prince fan. That's fine. I think he's, yeah. I recognize his talent as a musician. Yeah. I think he, like you said. What is it like being just so wrong? I know. I'm time. fine. I'm fine being on this side of the, the argument. But, but we've talked about this before. And I think the thing is like, the only way you'd be wrong is to say that you don't think Prince is talented. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yes, that's true. I know. I, th I realize he's talented. Yeah. It's just, it's not for you. Yes. I get the that's musical fine. genius of talent. I get his very childlike sense of, of humor. Like I get <laughs> yeah. where he's coming from. I, I'm fully empathetic to him. I just I I'm not a huge fan. I think he makes good music, but no, that's that's why that was that's where my girlfriend's at too. She's like, look, like because I've well, I watched like live videos and stuff, and she's like, No, I, I recognize that he is like he was a genius. Yeah. Like and that the easily one of like maybe one of the, the greatest guitar players in like mainstream rock music sure. of all time. But, you know, it's she's just like, I'm not into funk. And I'm like, I get it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's well, I mean, I'm into funk, but something about I guess I never had a Prince 
era like his vibe no not even that like i get it i just uh, prince was never in my household really i didn't oh, really yeah. have friends that were lit you know actively listening to prince i will say there's like there's a fine line between like like you can really enjoy listening to a prince song sure but then it's a whole other ask to enjoy watching prince perform <laughs> sure. a prince song sure. sure and i think watching him is for me more enjoyable than listening uh, maybe that's so just another you should yeah i i think that might be one of the cardinal sins that this movie uh commits especially in the eyes of a lot of people who enjoy watching prince perform is that uh there's one musical number in this movie and like it's it's not and it's 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 the opposite of a needle drop. It's like stumbling over your own feet. Like it's exactly like Prince in one of the first scenes where he trips on the rug. That's <laughs> yeah. how they get into the yeah. musical number. It's very strange. I, I mean, unless you count, you know, Prince and the Revolution rocking out in, in heaven. heaven. Yes. I absolutely. Oh, I <laughs> what have. The fuck? Oh, hang on. Let's not, let's save that for the end because I want to sure. talk about that in depth. Yeah. But can I also tell you with the first with where are you know I'm gonna skip for now. Yeah. The whole intro in relationship with this movie because sure. I got notes. But yeah. When they first get into that musical number, it's uh -huh. literally started by Chris and Scott Thomas pointing out screen saying, "Hey, look!" Yeah, look, and someone's <laughs> moving tables. That seems to be the setup for his performance. Yes, it that is. I think that might have actually been when I tweeted that out, but because <laughs> I know in my notes at that section, I wrote down, this is not a movie. No, it's not a movie. This is not by by legal <laughs> definitions. You cannot call this a movie. I don't know what this which is, we, which we've established this season is the litmus test. Is, yes. <laughs> yeah. Quality is, is it a movie? It did, Space Jam 2 is more of a movie than this movie. I'm here to say it. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Big if true. Big if true. So you're saying algae rhythm should have been in this movie. Oh my God. He, he would have fit right in. I could see Don Cheadle on the tables dancing during this musical number where doing a split where prince takes his jacket off puts it back on and then takes it off again <laughs> yeah. during this the same scene <laughs> that's the same shot reversed yes, yes. i'm pretty <laughs> fucking sure I, so i have a theory about that scene because i think that there's also so many shots where he's clearly not singing yep even though he begins it with a microphone and then drops the microphone yep. and keeps singing and the song keeps going yep and then he i think that they filmed four hours of dancing yeah and then just picked like the best three minutes to like yeah. edit together uh, i think initially this was supposed to be sort of like a la la land type thing where prince had different musical numbers mm -hmm. throughout the movie yeah and then because the budget was so low they're like well we can only really afford one you know what i mean well no he, he this was this was produced by warner brothers and like it was his music so i i don't think that that was an issue i think it literally came down to uh because the 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 first two people hired to, or considered to direct this movie were music video directors yeah. and i think he literally was just like i don't want to do purple rain again i want to do this weird wasn't one of them uh the woman that went on to direct pet cemetery yeah mary lambert yeah that's amazing who had mm. done madonna's uh like a prayer video uh oh. but yeah and i but i think i think prince was just like i don't want to do this musical movie i want to do my weird uh you know uh heightened reality kind of set in the 40s no, it's but not. also clearly it's, it's in the in 80s day. yeah i know <laughs> but he's also clearly trying to remake casablanca it's yeah. so weird yeah he's doing he's he's shooting a, a present day movie but he's just like but i'm gonna make it like if buster keaton was doing movies now sure <laughs> like, sure can so i strange. i think one of the red flags here is wikipedia wikipedia describes this movie as a <laughs> romantic musical comedy drama film right like um, that's that's a mouthful it's a mess yeah it's, that is that i is. don't know that applies to like la la land I, sure sure la la land's better at, at handling its tones though i yes <laughs> well i could argue that la la land <laughs> yeah. is just a remake of this movie oh god <laughs> damn it Ugh. i i let's talk about it okay i <sighs> I want to rewatch La La Land in that lens. <laughs> Ryan Gosling is the modern Christopher Tracy. Yeah. Well, they do have like a dance scene where with the montage of like Ryan Gosling playing the piano and they cut to yeah. Emma Stone dancing. That's very much like this movie. Like everybody making room for them. And Ryan Gosling gives her, uh, he gives her the Bela Lugosi eyes. Yeah. Oh, God damn Under it. Under the Cherry Moon walked so La La Land could run. <laughs> is that the Cherry Moon lyrics to one of the songs? It is. Yeah. It's okay. The song, I had a feeling. It, it's the song he's playing uh, in the 
the club at the beginning oh, uh, or like he it, and it's kind of turns a lot of the songs on the soundtrack are like turned into like motifs in the score yeah um and then some of the songs are truly awful and aren't oh, actually yeah. on the album <laughs> like love what? and money is a bad song and it's not on, <laughs> like, why is there a drum beat under every single second of this movie right. it's it's not stop <laughs> yeah there's not a second in this movie where there's not music. Uh, the score does not match this movie. No, no at no. all. You keep expecting every time the drums come in for Tricky to walk in from off camera and be like, it's a conga line. Yep. Oh, God, the conga line. Uh, all right. You know what? I think we've already kind of briefly <laughs> expressed our feelings on this movie. Yeah. I'm not going to get into the history of our first time seeing it because sure. Mally, this was your first time. This is my first time. Yeah, uh, two hours ago. Yeah. Two hours ago. Yep. Oof, yeah. I'm too... Well, anyways, for those who may not be familiar, let's talk about one of three Prince films, right? He only did three. Yeah, I mean, unless you count Sign of the Times, which is like a concert movie that's like not available in the US, yeah. which is very good. But yeah, it doesn't not necessarily. Yeah, I guess I'm talking features, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Under the Cherry Moon. One of the third of three uh, Prince movies, Under the Cherry Moon. So I don't think we said the year exactly yet, but the year is 1986. Mm -hmm. The director is Prince himself. Uh, the film stars Prince, Jeremy Benton, Steve Burkoff. Jer Jerome. Jerome. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jerome Benton, <laughs> Stephen Burkoff, Emanuela Silent, uh, Alexandria Stewart, Kristen Scott Thomas, and Francesca Annis. Or Kristen Scott Thomas. In her feature debut. <laughs> yeah, well, in her feature film debut. We'll, we'll talk about her. Yeah. There's an incredible uh, story about yes. her going to the premiere. Yes. And her, have you heard this? Yes, I have. Her, her mom turned to her as the credits rolled and said something to the effect of, well, maybe the next one will be better. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, no, Chris has gone, Thomas knew this was a, was a, it was a flop yeah. immediately. Uh, it's so crazy because like, I, I can't, I'm like, it's so weird that no one talks about making this movie. Like yeah. Prince, obviously a very private, person but like fucking how the hell aren't people talking about this in every interview with the like the behind the scenes folks i mean why isn't you know the screenwriter talking about this or the cinematographer it deserves to be talked about on the level of the room like what yes, happened i agree i want to know everything that went into every weird decision i mean there's stuff in here you know tracy waking up uh, on a, in a grotto like yeah. or going to his little fucking fuck cave and like that is as baffling as you know tommy Wiseau arguing on a green screen on a roof that exists yeah you know? <laughs> it's so strange no, i would love to see a disaster artist too <laughs> where they tackle this movie absolutely i want to know how often michael like how often uh michael is it Ballhouse? is that his last name yes. the dp like how often was he asked about this movie because yeah. he like he went on to like shoot all of scorsese's movies yeah like he did fucking good fellas this movie looks like dog shit it looks so bad a lot of it has to do with the fact that it was shot in color and then converted yes. to black and white why because no one could say no to prince some of the camera movements aren't bad though like you can uh, see like this was early in his career but like you could see he was like there's some steady cam work in this movie where it's like oh shit like yeah. what is that doing in this film every once in a while but then you also have stuff like the the, the restaurant, restaurant scene, scene where yes. it's, yeah it's like <laughs> they put it on a fucking mario go merry-go-round yeah <laughs> it's so strange what the fuck no i i wrote that down i was like man this movie looks like shit there's no contrast to anything and in black and white you really need that it's all very flat and then as i'm like watching the movie and researching like why does the movie look like shit i'm like oh it was filmed in color yeah and it converted to black and white i'm like well that's yeah. dumb yeah like you can't shoot a movie in color and then just turn it black and white like, right. you gotta light appropriately for that no it always looks garbage like did you guys ever see the black and white version of logan yeah no. it looks terrible yeah no. it looks terrible i i don't i mean the only reason reason that the the fury road black and white version kind of works is because like they spent a ton of time doing like correction on it after they converted it exactly i kind of want to see i have a copy of the black and white version of fury road but i haven't seen it it's it's pretty good it's yeah um it the the scenes in the the dust storm are unbelievable okay. and they're also like terrifying because it's just like it, it becomes everything becomes so obscured and it's yeah it's, right. it's it's worth a watch for sure looks better than this movie is what he's saying <laughs> <laughs> well that's a very low bar 
Uh, the budget of this movie was $12 million. Yeah. It only managed to gross $10 million worldwide. Oof. It currently has a 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. Makes and sense. this movie dominated <laughs> at the Razzies. Oh, yeah, tied with uh, Howard the Duck, right? For worst picture. Oh, that, man, that's a tough call right there. <laughs> right. But it won... It won for worst actor. It won for worst supporting actor. It won for worst director. It won for worst original song, Lover Money. Yeah. Uh, and Kristen Scott Thomas was nominated for worst supporting actor or actress. Bless her heart. And um, uh, Becky Johnson was nominated for worst screenplay. And Kristen Scott Thomas was also nominated for worst new star. Oh, damn. Yeah. Bless. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, it's wild. The The screenwriter, this was her first screenplay, yes. and she would go on to write like seven years in Tibet. Like, I geez. saw that. What the fuck? Didn't they get her like right out of school, like right out of film school? Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, you know, in a callback to our Freddy vs. Jason episode, she's doing her best. <laughs> she is doing her best. Yeah, I agree. This movie just feels like there, there's kind of an overarching plot, but there's so such a mm. it's like a series of vignettes. And there's so many scenes that just end because now it's time to end the scene. Yeah. I mean, you, there, there's so many scenes that are just Prince doing little bits and there's like Recisto, like Recisto, which uh, nothing it, it, it adds <laughs> nothing. But I love it. It's so funny sure. to me. And then. Uh, but but I mean more so like there's a conversation about love and spirituality and then they decide okay we should look up and see bats at the end of this scene so Why? that the scene can be Why over. Why are there bats? <laughs> Why are there bats in this fucking French restaurant? Yeah. Can anyone explain? Anyone? No. Nope. 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 Nobody. Okay. But like there are moments that, that, that it feels like an independent film, which is so insane. Like there are moments where you can tell the actors haven't been told where their marks are or oh, when yeah. to start walking. There's scenes that'll like the shot will begin. And then people will stare at the camera for a full three seconds before they start moving. It's it's wild. And it's made by Prince. <laughs> the very opening scene, I have a note that said, so are the napkins actual directions oh Prince wrote down for himself so he could remember what he was supposed to do in the scene? Jesus Christ with the fucking napkins. Oh but my God. It, Tricky acts like he's setting him up, but he's not. Like, he's not even talking to the lady. Like, yeah. it's so, it's such a strange scene. Yeah. Before we get there, listener, I would not fault you if you aren't even familiar with this movie because yeah. it somehow has faded into obscurity for the most part in pop culture. But we do have a trailer. Oh, mm -hmm. no. And I haven't seen it. I'm sure it's terrible. It's a it's in, it's an artifact for sure. I'm hoping there's dialogue in it because I didn't even watch it beforehand. I wanted to be watch this with fresh eyes. So I think there's a narrator. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, this can't be good. All right, well let, here we go. See, now I, all I can think about is that we haven't gotten a spy thriller starring Prince. Because uh, now I want that. <laughs> there's a, No, it, it's interesting because I think there's so much of this movie is Prince not wanting to repeat Purple Rain. In Purple Rain, the, the love scenes in that movie are borderline pornographic. Mm. Like, they are insane. Like, to the point where... Like I watched it in a theater with my girlfriend at the time. They it was re-released in theaters after Prince died, and I was like uncomfortable watching oh, God. it. Oh, fair. And like 
Like, and I, but by, by comparison, the sex scene or the, the love scenes in this movie are weirdly like, melodramatic and chaste and shot in strange ways it's just shots of hands and candles yeah 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 Yeah, it's so strange well guys i want to put a pause right here for a moment because before we get into the film itself yeah i gotta tell you there seems to be a drink that is made specifically for prince Mm -hmm. that i found the purple rain well no no but uh that is obviously a great choice but no the drink of the movie i came up with that i found was just called sex appeal oh, okay and i'm like if that doesn't define prince to a t oh then, god you know and weirdly enough the ingredients kind of do feel a little princish yeah. um so it's a ha- it's a half ounce of white rum a half ounce of coconut rum teaspoon of jizz <laughs> <laughs> a half ounce of melon liqueur Ooh. a half ounce of peach schnapps I'm almost done. A half ounce of blue curacao, uh-huh. some lemonade, uh-huh. and a splash of sweet and sour mix. Okay. So it's a very tropical drink that definitely seems like the drink that Prince... Okay, so how how shitty does it taste, Dustin? It, yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> it also sounds as unfocused as this movie. Yeah, I agree. We've established you're not the be- best uh, mixologist. Mm-hmm. I will say it tastes exactly like this sparkling water I'm drinking because I didn't bother getting all those ingredients to make this drink. So <laughs> Right. <laughs> It was that was too much shit to go by. I was like, I'm not doing that. I'll just tell the guys what it is, and I'll I'll pretend. Fair enough. Like like I'm drinking it. So uh, hold on. You're not even committing to the bit you created. <laughs> no, it's it's good. It's real. It's real good. It's missing some jizz, but you know, it's pretty good. <laughs> just needs a little salt. <laughs> so where where do we where do we, where begin? Do we even begin? Uh, oh, yeah. okay. No, I want to begin with one of the first lines of the movie, which is. The more you drink, the better I sound. That's and pretty guys, great. we all played in bands. <laughs> God damn it. We can relate to that line. It's true. Just right at the top. It's true. I, I had that line gave me false hope because it's like, oh, this movie's gonna be funny. And it is not. <laughs> oh no, no, no. This movie is hilarious. Yes. Not intentionally. Just not in the way you thought it was gonna be. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like the movie opens with a narration. Mrs. Wellington, I think, narrates the movie. I have no but, idea. Like, one I'm not it's not clear who's narrating, but they tell the audience. Wait, is there narration besides that opening scene? Mm. Oh, that's fair. Maybe maybe at the very end. Do you count the letter at the end? Yeah. That that trick he is reading, not out loud, and responding to it yeah. with Katie standing right there who has no idea what the letter says. But then she knows what it says at yes. the end of it. Yeah. yeah. Very bizarre. And the narration tells us right off the bat that Prince is gonna die. Christopher lived for all women, but he died for one. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's and, and like he I think have did you listen to the How Did This Get Made episode about this? I did. I don't want to repeat too much of what they said, but yes, I did. I agree. I, but I, I will say Jason Manzukas had an incredibly insightful point about how this movie is shot and it's that prince shoots this movie like a film noir where he is is the the femme femme fatale fatale. yeah yes yeah like in this opening scene he's he's framed like lauren bacall like (laughs) the shadows are all in his face except for his eyes and it's and he's just kind of like you know giving fuck me eyes to this older lady dude it's wild i thought i literally wrote i was like is this a sketch like this is an (laughs) snl sketch right because it goes on for so long. And like, there's so many scenes like that where I'm just like, this should be four minutes yeah. and it's 12. My thing was like, <laughs> there's so many napkins. Yeah. Like it's it's to the point of satire. It's like, yes. Yeah. <sighs> well, and that's the thing is it's it's hard to tell. It's hard to track the tone of this movie throughout because it's also hard to track Chris as a character. Yeah. Sometimes he's... Uh, reluctant sometimes he's like negging this woman sometimes he's completely fallen in love with her and is talking about you know the the difference between the flesh and sp- and the spirit yeah and then other times he's like i'm gonna fuck everything in this city <laughs> like, yeah no it's... who who am i supposed to root for in this movie <laughs> right i have no idea but nathan you brought up a good point because guys i'm gonna say it prince is prince kind is of a scamp, scamp in this movie <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a he little sure scamp <laughs> he sure is he i oh man uh, yeah we'll get to it there's so many good little scamp moments that was a fantastic point though Mally, because i wrote down at one point i was like i don't understand the character arcs in this movie yeah. but also more importantly i don't understand the characters in general i don't understand their starting points no not at <laughs> all i don't even understand if christopher and tricky are related or lovers yes. okay thank you i was confused yeah. 
yes. They call each other brothers. They call each other cousins. Yes. The script refers to them as brothers, but they have some sexual chemistry that is unbelievable. Dude, when he trips, when he trips on that that rug, it is. And he gets, he catches him. Yeah. Prince is the femme fatale in this movie. Yes. Real talk. I want a homie who will throw petals in the bath while I'm in it. That's what I was saying. Like, DC, <laughs> why don't you ever do that for me, man? You never throw gross petals in the tub while I'm bathing. I, I got to say that did look like a very relaxing bath. It sure I, did. I did like that. We're on season four. Season five of this podcast <laughs> together, yeah. and you just you just not throwing roses in the You're top. Right, I'm falling behind. That's, that's fine. That's Can fine. I tell you though, yeah. Tricky in that opening scene, he does the pst harder than I've ever heard so anyone loud. do it yeah. before. Yeah, <laughs> it's not subtle at all. Do you know? So Jerome Benton is he's not an actor clearly but he's, he's so great in this movie he's so funny <laughs> he's yeah so good. well and that's the thing you're getting the performance that someone who has no instincts will give you do you know what i mean yes. like it is he's not overthinking it he's doing what's asked of him but he's also doing it in his own way and his whole deal is he was the sidekick to morris day and morris day in the time yeah and so i feel like prince after purple rain was just like i need to get a jerome yeah oh wait i i pay jerome's bills so like he, he <laughs> needs an Andy Richter to his to his Conan, yeah. yeah. Like it's you gotta have that. But he when he does the fourth wall break oh my during God. the 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 ladder scene, yeah. I was like, I don't this movie doesn't it doesn't know what it is. No. It's, it, I mean it's apparent before that, but I was like that moment I was like, what are we doing? Right. I don't understand. Yeah, it's so strange. And 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 it's also strange because so Prince goes back to this lady's house, uh sleeps with her. She wakes up to a note from him and then he wakes up elsewhere and leaves a note for nobody, which makes me think that that was a different scene that was cut. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So yeah. He also the note he leaves her looks like it was written by a two year old. <laughs> He's yeah. a scam. It's just like a big old smiley is face. Is that the goodness will guide us if love is inside us or no, that's a different that's a no, different that's note. A different note. Leaves, <laughs> there's a lot of notes in this fucking movie. He's he le there a lot of notes. A lot of notes. <laughs> Well, I guess one thing that you could, I don't think this is what they're going for, yeah. but one thing you could say is as to why this movie is so disjointed and is so mm -hmm. weird is technically it's a fairy tale. What? Because the opening VO says, once, once upon, upon a time. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. She says, once upon a time in France, and my girlfriend goes, oh no. I, I wrote the same <laughs> thing. I wrote the same exact thing. I said, oh no, we're starting off the movie with once upon a time. Right, no. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but technically you could say this is like a, a retelling of a story, and that's why all the things don't line up. But Oh, yeah, there's a lot of like shakespearean mistaken identity stuff in this too and i'm Ugh. not saying like on the level of shakespeare i just mean the tropes of shakespeare like the the fact that every shakespeare comedy is predicated on the wrong person getting a note <laughs> sure can i can i tell you though um i it's obviously not the only one to do this but uh -huh. this movie i think inspired one director in particular oh boy uh, that director being james cameron because i realized <laughs> oh, no. oh wait uh towards the end of this movie i was like where is this story christopher's a terminator well <laughs> With he does seem like I do believe that Prince could fuck someone with his hair. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I I just thought it was like this is not <laughs> this is not a new story. I think I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a new story of like let's trick this rich woman into falling in love with us. Yeah, for sure. But I was like I I kept racking my brain. I was like, where have I seen this story before? And I'm like. Oh, this is fucking Titanic. Titanic. Oh my god. <laughs> Steven Burkoff is Billy Zane yes! slash Rose's it's, mom. Yeah. It's it's so bizarre. And I'm like, How fucking great is Steven Burkoff in this movie? Uh, <laughs> just delivering every line like yes. this. <laughs> He's just doing his performance in um Beverly Hills Cop. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the same thing. It's so good. <laughs> Dude, when he has that Android machine message, I oh. love that he has the foresight. And the kindness to leave spaces in between the sentences so Prince can I know. do his little duet on the piano. <laughs> that scene is so funny, though. Like, it the... is funny. Okay, so for some of our younger listeners, mm -hmm. an answering machine was a device <laughs> that you used to have to have connected to your phone sure. in order to receive messages. Yeah. It's so funny to think of him, like, on the other end of that call going, Just like, waiting. who have you been seeing? <laughs> and Prince is like, me. <laughs> 
Yeah. Ah, it's so good. Such a little scam. Um, Landlord Katie, uh, they're clearly both sleeping with her for the rent. Oh, yeah. That was... La- yes. No, it's, I don't think that's clear. I don't think that's clear at all. Okay. I think it's very muddy what's going on with that relationship. Well, we also get the first of many, many classic tricky lines, which is... Yeah, give it that Bella Lugosi look. Yeah, <laughs> so, what the fuck? It's such a bizarre scene, and she screams like she gets scared. It's so I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting from this scene. There's that little like score hit too of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I don't understand. And Katie keeps popping up. Like I feel like there's a cut of this movie where she's a bigger character. There has to be, right? <laughs> I don't know. I think we got everything that was on the cutting room floor. <laughs> you know what? I know Dustin hates this, but really. Hashtag release the tricky, tricky cut. and Katie cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wouldn't mind a, a movie from her point of view. Like, yeah. what is going on in this movie? That would be fun. Well, and just to be clear, the first time we meet her and Tricky, they're just fucking behind the counter in the hotel lobby, right? Yeah. Because they pop up buttoning their clothes. <laughs> That's right after Prince rolls up in his Buick in his gold suit. And he, I'm like, is he not? Is he broke or is he Thank you. rich? Thank Thank you. I wrote that down, too, because I I don't understand. He's giving out money to kids. <laughs> like, and also, they pass him a basketball, and damn it, that goes nowhere. Like, I needed to... That's not to a basketball. Say- That's a soccer ball that he bounces like a basketball. Whatever. <laughs> I wanted, like, where was the alien resurrection? No look. Where was Charlie Murphy? <laughs> <laughs> they teased us with it, and we didn't get it, and I'm pissed. So good. I don't understand, though. I don't understand. Is, is he supposed to be poor? Because he's dressed in these lavish fucking clothes throughout this movie well, and then he buys flowers for that one woman yeah, he goes yeah. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> he doesn't even bother trying to speak French yeah. he's like F- no not even go nobody in this movie actually speaks French there's a couple and there's and the movie is not like hasn't made a decision on when to use subtitles there's full scenes where someone like yells at Kristen Scott Thomas in French and mm-hmm. like we don't know what they're saying but it's important for someone later in the movie to get subtitles for you scuffed my loafers yep but yeah yeah prince is like he's he's dressed all fancy he's buying flowers for strangers he pulls up in his nice buick he's giving money to kids and asking them when y'all gonna get jobs (laughs) he throws (laughs) later in the movie he throws seven hundred thousand francs at a guy like he balls up cash and just chucks it at this dude's face that's foreshadowing for when the joker would do that while dancing to prince oh sure Ah. sure smart smart (laughs) it's a whole universe happening here (laughs) so this is a batman prequel now that's right (laughs) nathan i I may need you to help me because at a certain point my notes just evolved into all caps what is going on okay uh why is everyone yelling in this movie right i don't understand these are all bulleted points by the way right i don't under i don't remember most of my notes are just huh <laughs> yeah yeah i was <laughs> yeah. fighting i was fighting to pay attention to this movie sure. it was very difficult so okay so so i will i will try to guide us along but also ask questions okay. because there are things that aren't in this reality um Oh, when we cut to Prince in the bath, uh, yelling about fascists. Yes. And then uh, I, my next question is, do people usually announce birthday parties? Is that a thing that like rich people did? I feel like that is an old Hollywood trope of like, OK, there's not a lot going on in the news. Okay. So front, for some reason, it's front page. Right. That this girl's having a birthday party. And so this is when the boys decide that they're going to be little scamps. Try, both try to woo. Uh, yeah, they're both going <laughs> to try to woo Mary Sharon. Two first names. Names. Two first names <laughs> uh, and get her $50 million trust fund. She comes out at, to her her birthday party yeah. naked. In a birthday suit. And nobody, nobody cares. Okay, <laughs> Mary's entrance into this movie is fucking awesome. Oh, it's I, great. I like her a lot. And th- this also this also follows the vi- like a series of vignettes at the party. There's an old lady who wants to fuck a young guy. Yep. There's a kid drinking wine. Yep. Uh, there's an elephant. <laughs> there's an elephant. There's a guy talking about how much he hates Mary's dad. Uh, and he's evil and bribing government people. <laughs> the little girl trying to get the little boy's attention was hilarious. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. There's also the little Dracula boys. <laughs> yes. Th- and there's also 
this meet cute between Prince and 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 Mary. That... Uh, so we're just gonna gloss over Mary's fucking drum solo. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you're right. We probably should talk about the drum solo. What the fuck? She's so charming. I <laughs> I think she's doing her. I, she is genuinely doing her best with the material. Oh, I I think she's really kind of good in this movie. She is. I agree. Is. Yeah, I but agree. In, Somehow in this dog shit black and white <laughs> transfer, she looks amazing in this movie. Somehow oh, she's she's gorgeous. Like she's yes. always been like beautiful. But like there's something she like I don't know. She has like a a presence in this movie. Like she is like gleaming whenever she comes on screen. I, th- I like her big smile. Yeah. And like I don't know. There's something really tr- and also when she's playing silly and drunk uh she she's she seems to be acutely aware of what the scene should call for Mm -hmm. in every disjointed scene (laughs) you know what i mean yeah until the end until the ending where they're in the car but we'll we'll talk about that (laughs) sure Uh, we'll talk about that when we get there we got a lot of movie to get through first but nathan you you texted in the group chat Uh before i started watching this movie the shot of mary first seeing prince across the party which is one of the funniest things i've ever seen in a film but you, you sit to it and i was like oh this must be from like a photo shoot or something You're like this is an actual scene in the movie i was like there's no fucking way there's no fucking way <laughs> it's so over the top he's voguing he's biting his finger he's <laughs> like, doing like the blue steel at one moment and like yeah <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, just keep going. I was very, I'm still baffled by this fucking moment. Oh, it's yeah, well, and she she seems interested, and then immediately tells her friends, "I it looks like it's diamond hunting season on the Riviera." So, and she like tells everyone to like spy on him and Tricky, and uh, Chris starts hitting on her, and mm-hmm. it, she's she's really great because it, he he says, "I was in the neighborhood," and she says, "Oh, and you got lost." Like she can't, yeah, she can't stand being challenged. Like yeah. she is. I, th- I I think she's really great. No, I do too. And then I don't remember what happens next, but my notes, I have two notes. Uh-huh. Uh, what even is this movie? Mm-hmm. And then the next note in all caps, what is going on? I don't remember what happened. Uh, this is when this is when the scene is ended by the conga line. Yes. yes, the conga line. But then they get thrown out of the party in the same way that Jazz got thrown out of the Banks house by Uncle Phil every episode. <laughs> yes. 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 yes, I think that's what my question was, because then Tricky is trying to fight the guys, but then somehow Christopher sees another woman with a car door open and as an invitation. I didn't understand what was happening. It's Mrs. It's the it's the lady he picked up from the beginning of the movie. Okay. She's coincidentally a friend of Mary's and Mary's mom. Oh, I, I could not be bothered to know anything about the mom characters in this movie because no. I, I, I had no idea what was going on with that. Subplot. But I, I do. I do have a note that uh, uh, that explains something you uh, mentioned to me before we started recording. Okay. So Mary, Mary gets a phone call from her boyfriend in New York that we never see who is an idiot and doesn't realize that she's not talking to him. Yep. And she gets into an argument with Chris and she says to Christopher, uh, most of the men I date aren't wearing wedding rings. And he yells, then they must be wearing diapers. Yeah. What? <laughs> the most what? insane what? line of dialogue I've ever heard. And then he screams at her because there's pits in the grapes, right? Oh yeah. Pits. Yeah. What yeah. The f- but also, yeah, he, he is breaking and entering into her home and then yes. eating grapes like... <laughs> It is very Shakespearean. <laughs> yeah, like he owns the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and then they get they get kicked out, but it is yeah, it's so and there's so many shots in this movie where you see the ring, you see him fiddling with it. And you're just like, what is this? Yeah. What is this? Is is this his dad's ring? Is this like, was he married before? Is this the ring he's going to give the woman that he ends up bamboozling into marrying sure. him? Sure. There's so... also like, they in that scene yeah. and they are like furious at each other. They're fighting. Yeah. And then we cut to not even two minutes later. They're having a dance montage at 12 frames per second <laughs> on, a, on a beach restaurant like i didn't under, i don't understand oh, that's because <laughs> she realizes that her dad is fucking mrs wellington so she's gonna send prince over to interrupt them fucking which he does i, I didn't get that at all mally did you get that because I, I must man i don't know it's it's not clear I, I have no idea what the fuck was going <laughs> on the only reason that i'm able to understand it is because prince looks at the camera and says so mary thinks i'm gonna walk in on her to like on her dad oh that's right literally my next note after the uncle phil note is yeah 30 minutes in this movie and i don't have any idea what the actual plot is yeah right. 
I don't understand the scene where where Prince goes to drop. I mean, I get kind of what it is. He goes to drop the champagne bottle off and the two glasses outside of Mrs. Wellington's house, right? Yeah, because Mary comes over and says, Mrs. Wellington said to meet her at two and bring champagne. Yeah. And so he shows up and then realizes that he's going into a trap. Sure, but then he gets in the guy's car. Yeah, that's inexplicable. And then just hots back in his car and drives away. <laughs> <laughs> well, not before not before he walks up to the door and says, yo, Isaac, stroke it a couple times for me, cousin, yes. and make sure you put a pillow up under that ass. She likes it. I did like that line. That was pretty funny. But no, <laughs> this this is um the opposite of the the filmmaking notion of start late and finish early. Uh huh. This is Prince saying start well, well before the scene should happen. Yes. And then le leave the camera rolling well after it's done. <laughs> yes. Well, because there's you got to get all those little bits it's in True. i guess i think that's the idea i mean and then wrapped up in all these scenes that are too long and don't go anywhere are really nice moments like tricky explaining like his kind of childlike view of love and how it like is is important and it's like a badly written scene but his performance is interesting i love is that, that when he gives the the poem when he, he recites the poem to her that, yes there's the tisk tisk what a pity sometimes life can be so shitty and then he says man i hate stupid kids i, yeah. I was like what is this character it's so strange <laughs> i love that I love that Kristen Scott Thomas dips prints when they're dancing. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he's such a small man. He's yeah, he so is. Tiny. He is very tiny. Uh, I love that Tricky calls him a cabbage head. No, I, I feel like this movie is it's like someone trying to make you laugh at an inside <laughs> joke that you're not in on. Yeah. That's exactly what the Recisto scene is. Yes, it's them <laughs> trying to. To, like they think you're in on it and you have no fucking idea right <laughs> and yes the record stove scene is very uh yeah it's very apt in, in describing this movie but it's you know normally i would you know for movies like this i would pull clips for like the more absurd and weird parts but it's that's the whole movie I, exactly i wrote that down i was like i can't do that in this one because it would be the entire fucking film yeah. after <laughs> the record stove yeah. um is the line about Miami where I was like oh shit that's actually very accurate you ever been to Miami baby there's nothing in Miami but people who weren't born there and drugs yeah and that's right. god damn it that is fucking true yeah I love I, I love that Prince decides we see have two separate scenes of Prince deciding that we're gonna bring Mary down to our world like mm -hmm. that's a thing he comes to a decision of twice yeah two times and some yeah and then Mary shows up wearing a diamond headdress and compliments Prince on owning normal clothing <laughs> like, and he starts negging her immediately which also like he well he makes like a comment about Tricky going to get his manners from the car and he's kind of being like polite and whatnot and then immediately cut to the next scene and he's just being a little bitch yeah he's he's being he's yelling he's like rocking back and forth in his chair he's yelling garçon <laughs> avez vous un crayon that's french is it <laughs> why does mary even hang out with these two because they're awful people <laughs> like, it's so strange it is it seems to be at first to piss her dad off yes and then, that's the traditional trope but the moment where she falls for him is so strange like i don't she goes from arguing with him in this scene to seeing him dance and then the next the next day she's like I was thinking about you and she like calls oh, him. <laughs> is that the phone call scene? Yes. Okay. What is going on with this scene? Because nothing is happening. No. Like there's a solid 12 seconds where it's just cut from him, cut to her, cut to him and nothing is happening. He bites a, s a loud sandwich. Yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, she goes, he goes, I'm thinking. She goes, uh, five minutes later, she goes, about what? Five yes. minutes later, he says, six. six. <laughs> <laughs> and... For some reason, she's got a see-through radio oh, that's yeah. just resting on her bed with her. And a see-through telephone, and Tricky has a see-through telephone in his apartment, too, what the fuck? later on. It's so strange. <laughs> no, that's just fucking cool. I didn't understand. And then there's something with us, with Sam Cook as well in this movie, because he gets brought up like four or five times. Four times, yeah. He's like, I, I put on a Sam Cook album, show her the show her the business. Yeah. Um, oh, that scene has one of my favorite lines. Well, it's a it's a it's a weird line but it keeps coming up it's when prince says why don't you handle the money and leave the draws to me the draws <laughs> yeah <laughs> like what a Ugh. gross line but then is that supposed to imply that like tricky's the pimp because or is tricky also a gigolo because i don't think that was ever that's the thing it's it is so unclear okay and it just changes sure it from scene <laughs> to scene yeah no it's insane yeah. <laughs>
it, unless I'm missing a scene, we get the shopping montage. Uh, yeah, right before that is when he he goes to her house, accidentally try like sleeps with the mom almost. Tries to. Oh yeah. god, yeah the the rape basically. When he climbs in the window and says, "I'm the pizza man." Yes. <laughs> It's a it's so strange. And then it's, it has the strangest safety call for whistles that he doesn't use. He just climbs up the ladder. He goes into the room. Starts, I, I laughed out loud when Tricky just started throwing rocks at his head. Yes. Oh, yeah, that, that's that's, that is great. genuinely so funny. And it is. But it is in, in the middle of this very uncomfortable, you know, Frankenfurter assaulting Brad and Janet style scene. Uh, it's so it's so odd yeah it's it's weird we're doing this movie right after promising a young woman yeah, a bit, like, oof, oof. and prince sounds nothing like isaac right so the fact that the mom does it it also i don't know i was like there's no way she would know the the only the only thing that saves that scene from like being unforgivable is that he doesn't he doesn't get the chance to do anything thank yeah. god yeah. He, he gets his zipper stuck did i hear that right <laughs> i think so like there's Ugh. some weird there's so many scenes in this movie that's just like white people standing on the fringes of the screen going my word yeah <laughs> like it while while prince is just existing oh when they have the musical number yeah the major d is losing his mind he's and... pulling on his hair and yes. like like his glasses might as well be wiggling like charles nelson Riley. like yes, it's but, the craziest but, but everybody seems to be having a good time in the scene it's yeah you would think it would be the opposite the prince would get up start doing his number and then everyone would be like oh and just like disgusted and then yeah, he would be win loose, them over but it's not. yes yeah he would win them over but they're immediately like hell yeah brother let's get into this fucking dance man. and they they boo isaac <laughs> yes, when he shows up i don't understand yeah I this is understand. now we're at the shopping montage which goes on forever oh so long. i was like there's no fucking way they're doing a shopping montage in this movie there's no way <laughs> it wasn't until the shopping montage that i realized they're trying to do a love triangle thing here sort of not really like, what is happening because occasionally tricky will just look at tracy and say like you know, I like her. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, like, even you? crazier than that, Tricky will look at his girlfriend and right. say, Mary's supposed to be mine. And I'm like, wait a minute. What? What? <laughs> and that the, the scene, the, the shopping montage is kicked off with maybe the worst edit in the movie, which is. Ugh. When she she comes over, she asks what she should do with the money. And Tricky goes, let's spend it freeze frame wipe yeah like it is the weirdest it's the weirdest transition i've ever seen they do like star wars wipe in this yeah. movie oh, yeah, they like, do. They, it's so it's so bizarre <laughs> I, I i mean it's it before well before this this the shopping montage do you figure that out but yeah. it just gets stranger and stranger yeah. and then the next thing you know there's a racing scene on an abandoned track <laughs> after Prince jams to his own song oh, sitting yes. in his car. So bizarre. He's just listening to he's like sitting in the car and listening to is that when he's listening to Kiss or is it when he's listening to oh, I, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I think he's listening to Kiss in that scene. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, yeah, it's so strange because he's just chilling there lip syncing and it goes on for like 30 seconds before mm -hmm. she pulls up and challenges him to a race. It's it's like um. It's like the the Daft Punk movie Interstellar five 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 five, but like, sure, Lord. but not good. It's just, it's just, Dustin, can you take this race scene and set it to "See You Again" from the Furious oh, Seven God. soundtrack? Oh, that would be fantastic! I'm here for that. Here for that. You know what? Just because you asked, just because you asked, I think I'll do that. But no, I I wrote down. I was like, "There's a race scene. I don't understand anything. Yeah. I don't. I mean, she's in a Porsche. Right. He's in this beat up piece of shit. And somehow they're keeping up with one another. Right. Until she hits the nos and fucking pulls out <laughs> in front of them. Yeah. I did. I didn't understand. And then the kiss. They kiss. The kiss they're... scene that's backlit by the headlights. My <laughs> favorite shot in the movie is they're making out as the camera zooms in, and guys, he grabs her hand and puts it on his ass. Yeah. Like, he pulls her hand down to cup his ass. Yes. Well, see, that was that was just like, like he was directing her in that scene, and <laughs> sure, they left it in. Sure. That was the rehearsal. He's like, here's what you're gonna yeah, do. Yeah. They and shot the rehearsal. And then they make love, and it is the strangest thing I've ever seen, because he... He mounts her, runs his hand down himself, yeah. up her dress, and then to her face, and then they kiss. Again. Is that the phone booth? 
they're in the phone no booth, right? that's oh. that's in a minute because he get he has the argument with her dad and she comes in and she's like he'll destroy you the chief inspector's on his yeah. payroll yeah well that was that's a random bit of knowledge to just drop right wait, now wait i'm sorry hang on nathan is that not how you seduce women <laughs> by mostly by mostly touching myself yeah you don't like <laughs> caress yourself first no oh i thought you were gonna say by locking them in a phone booth with you <laughs> oh sure well, that, yeah it is <laughs> It is a late addition to find out that Mary's dad is the kingpin. Like, yeah, yeah. And also, it doesn't make it's it's not it's we've talked about the Titanic thing, but it's not because she's already rich. Right. And then her future husband is also already rich. They're just becoming mega rich. Yeah. I'm like, OK. Yeah. Because he's like, do you know what our powers could be like combined? Oh God. It's not a Romeo and Juliet. It's it's I don't know. I don't even know what you would call it. <laughs> I'm yeah. so baffled by this movie. If they, if they, if she marries him, they can combine to form like the most rich white yeah. uppity Voltron of all time. I guess. <laughs> and it's so strange because immediately after this, like Tricky and and Christopher get into an argument about like you know about how you know women use him and all this stuff and i'm like we just had a full scene where prince essentially told her father you don't own her anymore i do like yeah. it is it is very not it, cool it, it, does, it is not as romantic as they think it is yeah and is that the scene where tricky reveals their plan to her yeah, he comes out drunk in a cowboy hat what is going on <laughs> with that score in that scene I have no oh it's clue. so strange like it's this big it's this big dramatic like reveal where she finds out their plan and it's like yeah doom, 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 it's doom, the drum beat there's a drum beat in every fucking scene in this movie yeah the drums are relentless but it has it has weird like casio keyboard in it yeah. too because it's like it's like beep 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 <laughs> like it's so doom, strange doom, all right hang on nathan all right three okay. two one go Jesus Christ. That is the score for the scene. Actually, this is this is pretty much a song from the movie. It's it's I, <laughs> We're I wonder get a copyright you. flag right there. Yeah. Our Prince cover band is coming along great. <laughs> and like, yeah, but Tricky screams at him in front of Mary, and her response is to quote a Prince song at him, and she goes, Do you lie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then we also get maybe Tricky's best line <laughs> and something I'm definitely gonna scream <laughs> from now on, which is full moon, I'm a werewolf bitch. Kiss my ass! Yeah. yeah. The single best line in the entire yeah, film. Yeah, she goes, because Katie asks him why he did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so strange. Yeah. Every line Tricky has is, is fucking gold. Oh, and then immediately he says, I'm my own man, just like Liberace. Sure. Yeah. What? <laughs> Classically his own man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that scene goes on so long. There's just people like meandering around, walking around, yelling at each other. It felt like the, it, again, it felt like one of the rooftop scenes in the room or yeah. like the scene where they're they're passing the football back and forth in the in the alleyway and they're yep. clearly improvising like it's just... well that's prince passing the soccer ball with the kids earlier in the movie right yeah <laughs> right it's just it goes on for so long and there's like three lines of dialogue that actually convey information we need i mean this movie needed i think what would have helped it be a little more grounded and uh -huh. like i could follow the plot a little better is it's missing the Billy Zane character is missing that boyfriend character that's sure. like trying because they pass it on to, to the dad. We, we needed Jonathan to show up. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. needed something, something because every scene is, is Prince and Mary. They're in like every scene together yes. and it should be, there should be a dividing line between them or keeping them from a, up being together right. keeping them apart but it's not the only tension in this movie is does mary like him yeah, yeah. and then and then he gets murdered <laughs> or does prince like her because he seems to fucking hate her <laughs> yeah oh i mean th there's that bit where like he goes to like make his case to her and his whole thing is She's like, well, what do you want to talk about? And so he just climbs in the back seat, puts on sunglasses. Oh, and we're almost there. We're almost there because... Oh, yeah, because before that, we have that insane David Lynch scene where the scary woman comes out of the darkness and yep. says, I missed you and I want to get with yep. you. Yep. yep. And like cackles and vanishes like Dennis Hopper in Blue Velvet. Which, yes. what? Who is that? No woman? clue. Who is that? We've never seen no her clue. before. <laughs> she just pops out of nowhere with evil laughter. We get the Casablanca ending of him pulling up to the airport right and then in, instead of having like a heart to heart and you know having an emotional moment he just kidnaps her he just drives the fuck <laughs> he away he sure does he sure fucking does like he and she gets in the car and she's like i'm not giving it to you 
And he's like, oh, yes, you are. I'm like, that's the rapiest thing you could ever yeah. fucking say. And then yeah. drives away. He steals her. <laughs> Tracy does not endear himself to anyone in this scene. Mm -mm. And like, but like the last bit is just a series of chases. I mean, Tricky fights the guy. I love Tricky's little punches. Oh, they slap the fuck out of Tricky <laughs> yeah, in that apartment. <laughs> Holy shit. What's what's up with the uh Oh no, my new tie line. What? Yeah. <laughs> Very strange. And then the loafers. The loafers, yeah. And check out these check out these cufflinks. Oh god, yeah. And then also Tricky has yet another great line of only confused men wear loafers. Yeah. yeah. What? what? <laughs> Are you confused? Yeah. Yeah, and then Trace, Tracy has to take a boat to get to the grotto, but Tricky and Katie just run over to it. Yeah, like, how did Tricky get there? Tricky, when he emerges, yes, when he emerges from the grotto, I, I threw my hands up. I was like, what the how fuck? He, how did he get How there? did he get to the sex cave? Yes. The way that shot is framed, I thought, I've always thought, every time I've watched it, I thought Tricky fell to his knees, no. but he doesn't. He just walks down the last step, and he's a very short guy, yep. and the camera doesn't follow him. Yep. Like, it is such a strange moment. Oh, I guess before we get there, yeah, we should talk about when instead of appealing his case to, to Mary, yes. Prince gets in the backseat of his own car <laughs> and puts sunglasses on and sits in silence like a petulant child. And, and He doesn't just put sunglasses on. He leans down out of frame and comes back up with sunglasses <laughs> yeah, on. That's right. That's right. Like he's doing an elevator bit behind the yes. couch. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then we're not even focused. The camera doesn't even focus on Mary. It focuses on him just sitting back there. And it's like, is this supposed to be mysterious or is it him being like defiant? She's literally saying stuff like, well, why don't you say anything? You brought me out here. And as an audience member, I'm also like, yeah, Prince, like this is your moment. Yeah, please. Please say anything. What does he what does he say? I don't even remember. What is his line back to her? He says, I love you. Yeah. And then I hate you. And then, yeah. No, that's right. Because then she goes, she goes, no, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. And then they kiss. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to Prince movies, Dustin. Uh, there's so many moments in this movie that feel like Prince was essentially saying on the day, like, so what if we tried? Oh, wait, I'm the director. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the sunglasses. But yeah, then it turns into like the third man. Oh, like here yeah. at the year where everybody's just trying to chase him down. Oh, the hubris <laughs> of shooting this like the third man. I yeah. swear I had I had the same thought. But it's so funny because it's also played as like a comic beat because when Tricky catches up with him, and I love that Tricky in this third act just has a cowboy hat in every scene. Oh, it's great. <laughs> There's it's no great. reason yeah. for it. But he's like, he, he he's like, uh, oh, shit like richard pryor in superman 3 like yeah. trying to sneak yeah. into the plant <laughs> but, but then tricky catches up to them and i think it's prince is like well what are you running from and he's like that and he points behind him and they're not it's the the, the bodyguards they're not that far away no. right and it's just like oh well let's keep running like <laughs> well, sure. and he's like yep he points at them and he's like you ever had your ass kicked for breakfast that's right <laughs> yes that's right right and then he hops, hops on a speedboat and burst off to the grotto. And when as soon as he gets there, with Mary, j j he just left her, I guess, for some yeah. reason. Yeah, he just left her at the sex grotto. But then also he's approaching on this little like fucking boat and she's just like, Christopher, run. Yeah, he's on a fucking boat. Like <laughs> I said, I said out loud, he's on a boat, damn it. <laughs> yeah. And then and then uh, Lonely Island started playing and <laughs> right. T-Pain was there. Shout out. No, yeah. I, that would have made this amazing, honestly. I was like, police like they're on his payroll go straight to shooting no, no it's not the police it's the coast guard that's right he calls the coast guard <laughs> they shoot him down immediately yeah <laughs> and prince has maybe one of the best reactions to being shot that i think i've ever seen it's pretty good uh, he commits but in all the worst way <laughs> yeah so you expect that line from uh from what is it harold and kumar where he he says bullets my only weakness <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would have been great but also, like, he, he, Prince went to the Christopher Nolan school of being shot where there's no blood <laughs> right. whatsoever. It's just, <laughs> he just falls to the ground dead. They were going for that PG-13 rating, man. That's right. He, he, he gives this monologue to God. He's still a baby. <laughs> he doesn't even check on his friend. He yeah. just immediately starts spouting, 
his bargaining with God. Please, is, God. Yeah. So, yeah. So bizarre. So, Nathan, yeah. sorry, we, I think we're here already, but why don't you... We're at the end. Yeah, why don't you wrap up for... I mean, it feels like we missed a lot, but why don't you <laughs> at least tell us what happened here at the end of the movie? We could do... Yeah, we could do a, a speed run of, of notes if anybody's got any left. Sure, but, sure, um, sure. Yeah, we... we uh, Prince is... Uh, Tr Christopher's shot. He falls in Mary's arms, tells her we had some fun, dies in her arms. Sometimes it snows in April starts playing, which is a song that is very literally about the end of the movie. Yeah. And uh, it's revealed that Mary bought Tricky his own apartment complex, and now he's being a hard ass landlord and forcing Katie to pay the rent. He's a slumlord. He's, an <laughs> asshole. he's a fucking <laughs> asshole. And the camera pans up to Prince and the Revolution playing Mountains in Heaven. Which all I could think about when it. Fucking when the camera went up, showing them playing in heaven was fucking <laughs> Talladega Nights. Nice. Just yeah. I like to picture my Jesus singing lead vocals for Leonard Skinner, <laughs> like an angel band. Yeah. I'm on the front row and I'm hammer drunk. The, the thing that is like so crushing about that sequel, I Mountains is my favorite Prince song. Like I think it it rules. The weird thing is I always I like forget that it's such a strange moment in this movie. And then we see Kristen Scott Thomas's character mm -hmm. just kind of crying her eyes out in a couple yeah. of quick shots. Yeah. Like it, is, it is such a weird Pr bit. Prince is on a rug sitting crisscross applesauce fucking singing the song and she, they just cut the shots of her bawling her eyes. <laughs> like, yeah. he's just, sitting sitting down crisscross just holding maracas. Yep. Well, in the and and what's what's truly baffling is the chorus of the song is love will conquer if you just believe. And the movie's just proven that that's not true. That's true. Yeah, that's not true at all. <laughs> love can't stop a gunshot. <laughs> the most offensive part of these in credits though is the first thing that pops up is the words the players yeah oh, sure. in terms of the actors yeah. and i was like how fucking dare they do this shit? and it is one credit every 15 seconds so that yep. they can fit this whole music video in there oh yeah scrolling from bottom of the screen to the top oh it's so funny and did you guys notice there is a great credit <laughs> in this movie did you guys recognize who the foley artist was oh i i i did clock that now i can't remember what the name was it was just someone named solange oh yes <laughs> I was like, right i was like oh shit Wait, like beyonce's sister <laughs> yeah that's what i thought i was like oh shit she's fucking doing Foley work back in the 80s. All right. <laughs> I also noticed that the original director who was fired was credited as a creative mm -hmm. consultant. Mm -hmm. Really? Because mm -hmm. she shot, I think, like the first week and a half of filming or something like that. Yeah. Huh. I, I I feel like even though we're here at the end, I feel like we didn't adequately explain what this movie is to people that haven't seen it. So uh, good fucking luck. I think people who have seen it have a hard time explaining That's, it. Okay. Well, then, Nathan, I'm going to try my best. So the listener, if they've never seen this movie and they're just listening to our episode, <gasps> I'm going to try and explain what the movie is. And you correct me, Mally, you as well, if, if I'm missing a beat. So oh, I'm not going to be able to correct you. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> so it's. It's set in quote unquote present day, <laughs> but made to believe that it's in like the 30s or 20s, mm. maybe. Mm -hmm. It's Prince and his maybe brother, maybe cousin, maybe just friend Tricky. Yeah. Uh, living in France. And for some reason, everybody speaks English. Except for when they don't. Yes. Prince is a gigolo. Mm -hmm. Tricky either is as well or is just his pimp yeah I, I, that's never made clear yeah yeah he, yeah he's either he's either also a gigolo or he facilitates the meetings yes and so prince meets up with these rich older women and eventually <laughs> this is gonna be such a good select <laughs> and and prince is they're like look we gotta we gotta come up with the rent we're behind on the rent because he also plays piano in this bar yeah um to make money like they're behind on the rent but he's just giving out money every scene yeah. yes and it also doesn't really matter because tricky is fucking the landlord right so they come up with this plan because it just happens to be in the newspaper mm -hmm. to uh seduce this 20 this woman who's not even 21 at the time of them coming up with this plan, who's about to be turning 21. Yeah. And because she's the heir to a $50 million trust the day she turns 21. Uh -huh. So they crash her birthday party. They so, somehow she's onto the plan immediately. <laughs> and from there, it does devolve into a somewhat love triangle. Not really. Kind of. Yeah. And then we, it's also revealed that Mary's dad 
is cheating on his wife right and that the wife knows about it yeah because that's an intense scene where he he's like she knows what i do and then her mom is also just like we're all hurting like that's a gr- that's a genuinely well acted scene that was a scene that did not belong in this movie because i was like percent the tonal shift <laughs> did you notice the the maid wiping her eyes like six yes. times during that scene yeah. like she's like i am going to <laughs> I'm 100 percent going to make my mark on this scene (laughs) even when the camera rotates around she's in the mirror in between them just just dabbing away at her eyes and so it it eventually devolves into prince and mary do fall in love question mark sure and when prince and her run away together mary's dad sends the coast guard (laughs) to gun him down yeah yeah immediately you're doing great and then that's it yeah (laughs) that's the movie (laughs) did i miss anything dustin you did it yeah no i think you fucking nailed it man jesus (laughs) (laughs) there is a skeleton of a movie here that is filled with fucking insanity okay but all right question Uh would this movie be better if it just wasn't prince No. no it would be lost to obscurity if it wasn't prince i agree I I think if Prince wasn't in this movie and there wasn't the fascination of how is he going to interpret these scenes? How is this? How does this work? I mean, it's similar to The Room where you're like, how is this filtered through this person's unique mind? Yes, I agree. And I I think if this movie doesn't have Prince, you lose like pretty much everything that makes it uh, worth seeking out. Okay. Uh, and And I think no one would remember this movie. Do people remember it now? That's a good Arguably, point. Arguably, that's that's a really good point. <laughs> We're bringing it to the subconscious right now with this sure. episode. What if this episode gets zero listens and then just like the, like <laughs> under the cherry I, moon just exists in I, like the the Bermuda Triangle of content? I would love it. In fact, <laughs> listener, if you made it this far, shut it off. Somehow we erase your listen history. I don't know. Don't <laughs> throw away. Burn your SIM card. Don't tell anyone about this episode. You hear me? <laughs> they they listen to the whole episode but it just never gets marked as played in their yeah. library yeah. i love it love it i, I think i've seen you, hang on nathan you you good yeah i'm just i'm having a real good time with this episode i'm also a little tipsy oh great i i've seen student films made more sense in this movie and directed better sure. but also i think this may be the first movie where i have nothing positive to say about it wow not a single the only thing i can say is i think uh chris and scott thomas yeah and uh tricky are are genuinely pretty decent yeah okay so that's that's two positive things i don't want to but i don't want to say good i sure. would say it's Half for Tricky, half for her. They're doing their best. Yeah, they're doing their best. They're doing their best. Their best. (laughs) Every line Tricky has. Yeah. Also, his hat. Oh, his his hat is exquisite. It's great. Have you guys uh, heard anything about how this movie was premiered? I have not. I did. I know this story, but (laughs) please, I I can't wait to hear Mally's. uh, Yeah, please, please go ahead. (laughs) So, so when the movie was, when the movie was coming out, MTV had a contest where like the 10,000th or the 1,000th person person that called in wait a second yeah. mm-hmm. they they were like if you win if you're like the 1000th caller the the movie will have its world premiere in your town plus prince and the revolution will fly out and do a concert insane that this was a contest yeah. i just have to say this is whoever put this contest together it was a moron but please <laughs> wait that was for this movie yes mm-hmm. so oh so the the winner was a a, a woman named lisa barber And she was given an interview like the day after she won. And she was really excited about all the celebrities that were coming out to the to the the premiere. And um, the when the paper interviewed her, they asked her, like, are you a big Prince fan? And she said, yeah, he's okay, But I really like Motley Crue. I hope I get to meet Tommy Lee. (laughs) And so so Prince's like publicist and manager immediately started doing damage control. This is all like laid out in this incredible uh, article on ultimateprince.com. This needs to be a documentary, by the way. This part would be a great little scene in the the documentary of the making of this movie. Yes. 
So so they basically like they flew out, gave her a makeover, told her, hey, you have to like be more excited. The prince is coming to Wait, your why town. Did she get a, why did you have to get a makeover? I don't know. Well, cause, <laughs> I didn't read that because part. they were filming. They were filming the premiere for like an MTV special. Yeah. And they're like, no one goes allowed. Right. In our <laughs> what the Because I, I, I knew about all this. I didn't know it was for this movie. Yeah. That's amazing. So the revolution flies out. Prince was planning on driving his Buick from the movie to the premiere. And oh. they said, no you actually have to pick her up she's gonna be your date like it was this whole weird thing and then they did a show at the holiday inn yep like like they had to set up an arena style show at the holiday inn and at one point like uh wendy melvoin the guitarist for the revolution was talking about how like it was so hot in there like people were getting sick like but they did this one hour concert in the holiday inn i'm sending you guys a picture okay of the town as prince was rolling up oh boy it is literally oh boy do, like a town that is what? like <laughs> what less than one percent black people and what? like dudes on horses like showing up to greet prince Ugh. at their tiny little theater that looks like uh, a mcdonald's from the 80s yes and now uh there's a kid holding four balloons and nobody else has any balloons in this crowd <laughs> yeah. and what's incredible is that there was a there was a deadline article about uh about this whole thing that came out a couple of years ago that kind of went into all the gory details and how like the the revolution was basically breaking up at this point like they did like three more shows before prince disbanded them <laughs> i think that's how i heard about this was that article actually yeah and now it's being uh in the in pre-production for a movie no. uh, starring elizabeth banks as the woman who won a date with prince no the oh, real oh that's what it that's what it was i heard about that movie oh my god yes, i hope i mean I, I i can't imagine that they'll be allowed to use prince's likeness in the movie but if they do like this is gonna be something to see like this is so strange can i tell you who needs to play prince fred armison no <laughs> <laughs> no someone <laughs> i think that that Prince would actually sign off on on playing him. Oh, okay. Nicolas Cage. No. Rihanna. Rihanna? Oh. Yeah. I would fucking watch that. Are right? you kidding me? That sounds great. Rihanna could play Prince. Yes. 100%. And I think he would approve of that, too. But Prince could not play Rihanna. Mm. I beg to differ. I you disagree. So? I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I disagree. I think he could probably play a pretty good Rihanna. They're both such singular individuals. Sure. Um... Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I just thought that was such a wild story. By the way, how great is Rihanna? I'm sorry. Can we just real quick just take a detour? How great is Rihanna? Rihanna's great. Jesus Christ. Bless. We love her. All right. Well, <laughs> is, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get to the... Oh, uh, you got your Rihanna in my Prince conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you got your Prince in my Rihanna conversation. Oh, I guess the only other thing to mention is that uh, according to rumor, Madonna was originally up for the role of uh, Mary Sharon. I believe that. Of course she was. She was too busy making die another day. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly, Susanna Melvoin, who was uh, his girlfriend at the time, yep. and then they started filming and it was like clear she couldn't act. So yep. they replaced yep. her. I, I No, I think Kristen Scott Thomas is perfect for this and this actually this is at least the second movie of hers we've done so i guess we have to start a new category oh for, for movies because she's also the mom and only god forgives oh, oh yeah right. she's great in that yeah which was that was that was season one i believe season one way back boy, oh boy. way back well all right well if without uh <laughs> further ado then let's get into one of my favorite segments of the show prop cop um there's actually not a whole lot of props in this movie that I would say. I mean, other than wardrobe. <laughs> sure. So, Nathan, yeah. your movie, you pick first. What, what you want? So, I, uh, there's an obvious choice, and then there's the... Uh, okay, I'm just going to take the... I want the Rekka Stone napkin. Of course. Okay. Of course. That makes sense. That'd be a good little... That would probably fetch a quite a high price, too, for sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, uh, if you look at when she's holding it later in the movie during the, the long oh, phone different. call scene... Yeah, it's a completely different note. It's, like, written differently. This is also something that keeps happening throughout this season because it happened in Resident Evil as well. Oh, a fucking note right. that changes handwriting on it halfway through the movie. Yeah, I think James Purefoy actually did write the second one. He also he wrote down, you know, all your dreams will come true today, Prince. Yeah. At the Recasto. <laughs> At the Recasto. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mally, what about you? What what prop do you want to take? Uh, I, I'm 
gonna have to cop Tricky's Rolls Royce at the end. Hell yeah. Like, I'm trying to cruise. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. It was either that or one of Prince's outfits. Oh, I know. <laughs> I would definitely take literally any of Prince's wardrobe, but I'm, I'm, gonna, go with the, I'm gonna go for the Rolls Royce. Sure. The outfit he's wearing when they're walking up to the restaurant, where yep. it's like the half shirt and pants, and like, it that is an unbelievable outfit with the gold chain around his hips yes yeah. yes i initially was gonna go with the boom box that he brings in uh-huh. oh good one good call good call uh, that him and tricky bring in during that restaurant scene but the more i kept going on the more i was like man nothing so far is beating that hat that he wears when he's in the bathtub ah, it's yeah. great it's a great little hat yeah that's the hat he wears in heaven at the end that's right. yes, he, had, it is. he had to take it with him yeah. i would say that i'm taking his heaven hat the uh <laughs> The see-through radio is really great, too. Yeah. With the neon pipes inside. Oh, hell yeah. For some reason. (laughs) All right. Well, what about a bit part? What is... um... Oh, I got mine. Okay. All right. Well, for for new listeners, this is... um, If if there's a small role in the movie that you would like to play yourself, so you could say, hey, I'm in that movie. What's (laughs) what's the role you're going to play, Mally? I want to be one of the smoking bums in the background towards the end that applauds them for fucking... Yes. (laughs) I knew that was going to be someone's <laughs> pick. Yeah, I knew me it. Too. Like, and even before they started plotting, just the moment they pull up and there's these, like, there's just a bum in the background smoking. I'm like, well, that's my, that's my role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he applauds them. I'm like, that is my role. Yes. I, I wish there was subtitles for that because that's one of the one times someone speaks French. Yeah. And I would have liked to know what he was saying. <laughs> Um, Nathan, what about you? Bit part? Oh, man. Um, I want to be Victor Spinetti's character. There's these three people that show up throughout the movie. And he's... The gossipy bitch in the white suit? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's the dude who was in... He was in A Hard Day's Night yeah. and Help. He, he's the one who was just like, well, Mary, Mary's father is always bribing public officials. Like, I want to be that guy. Yeah. I love that you chose that, and you'll find out why in a minute. <laughs> oh, boy. I originally chose uh, to be one of the fridge bubs as well, which <laughs> yeah, I still dude. could because there's two of them but i kind of want to be the maitre d that's just losing his mind during the musical number (laughs) yeah (laughs) all right well without further ado then let's get to the whole reason we are here and good luck everybody (laughs) the silver lining for under the cherry moon who would like to go first? I got one. Okay. Christopher Tracy did his best songwriting after he died. <laughs> Damn. Because Mountains is a fucking bop. <laughs> All right. I'll give you that. Give me that. Mally? I mean, I said Nathan was going to like this one. My silver lining, that gossipy bitch in the white suit is going to have a fucking field day with this. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that Mary Sharon's father shot a boy? Like, dude, oh, they eat good after this one. They're credited in the end credits as the Jaded Three. I noticed that. It's amazing. Like, get the fuck out of town. Great credit. <laughs> that is exclusively how the three of us should be referred to from now on. <laughs> that's the, for now on, that's the name of the, the show. Jaded the three. Jaded Three. The Silver Lines <laughs> playlist featuring the Jaded the, Three. The Jaded Three. I love it. <laughs> I like featuring. That's, yeah, that's, that's great. That's good. We are the players. We're the players. Oh my God. <laughs> the players, AKA the Jaded Three. That's a, oh, that's a terrible boy band from the 90s. Um, Absolutely. My Silver Lining was, uh, Christopher was a terrible person and Mary dodged a huge fucking bullet. He didn't. <laughs> oh my god! Both physically and and emotionally, she sure. dodged a huge fucking bullet because he gets shot. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I I don't know. I think Mary's character is not a good person either. But <laughs> I think she's just a dumb twenty one year old with too much money. Yeah. True. Yeah, I had no idea what I was doing at twenty one, and I was broke. And I also don't know what the movie's tried to say with her character at the end, where she's just crying over the credits. And then sometimes, like her arm is just up in the air. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a consequence of the weird green screening that you're not really sure if she's in danger. <laughs> right, dude. Some of the members of the revolution there in that that performance in heaven at the end. Uh-huh. I swear I saw a guy yawning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was the other... My other possibility for a bit part was one of the guys dancing with Tricky. Because Tricky's also in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> for some Tricky, reason. Tricky, still alive, but also in heaven. Part of him died with Christopher. Ah. Uh. <laughs> the guitarist that's sitting on... I think she's sitting on the piano when she's yes. playing. She's like looking yeah, over yeah. her shoulder. I was like, that's a great... She looks, looks so bored. <laughs> well, they were all fighting during this. True. <laughs> like, yeah. My favorite 
thing about Purple Rain. And I know you haven't seen it, Dustin, right? Mm -hmm. Which that's amazing that you have not seen that movie. I'm not opposed to it. I just haven't. One of the runners in the movie is that like Prince's character, the kid, has to learn to trust his bandmates and let them have their own say in things. Oh, and boy. like <laughs> like at the end of the movie, there's this beautiful moment where he says, I'm going to play a song that the girls in the band wrote. And it's like supposed to be this cathartic scene where finally he's accepted other people's help and he's letting them know that they they're important to him. And then they play Purple Rain, which is great, except he wrote that song. Yeah, like, we know we know Prince wrote that fucking yep. song. <laughs> so, and then he ejaculates a guitar. Into the crowd. I, I do like yeah. the song Purple Rain, though. I will Hell say yeah. it's a it's an obvious masterpiece it's so. undeniable yeah um well listener if our silver linings did not uh do enough <laughs> to uh redeem to redeem your emotions at the end of this movie uh we we have here is what we'd like to call the double feature aka the pick me up so this is uh where you watch under the cherry moon and then uh immediately after you put on this other movie that we suggest mm -hmm. just kind of, to kind of balance things out a little bit. So Nathan, what do you have as a double feature for under the cherry moon? Yeah. Um, if this 1986 movie starring a pop star with uh, an insane supporting cast didn't work for you. <laughs> oh no. Perhaps another 1986 movie with a pop star with an insane supporting cast will do the trick. Uh, you should check out labyrinth. Okay. Nice. That, that's a good connection there. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Um, Mally, what about you? I was originally going to suggest, just the brothers bloom because <laughs> they are literally the same fucking movie yeah <laughs> sure like yeah. two con men trying to do one over on a rich young woman yeah but uh, the more i thought about it the more i had to throw out another kind of gem of a movie that just had like you had a fucking phenomenal talent directing and great cast and it just oh, didn't boy, I know this come is a setup. out but i'm gonna go with dan the film directed by dan Aykroyd, nothing but trouble oh boy mm, yeah okay where where dan Aykroyd has a dick nose oh yeah <laughs> look it, audience if you aren't familiar with nothing but trouble just look <laughs> up pictures of dan Aykroyd in that movie because oh my it's amazing chevy chase is the lead demi moore is the other lead john candy's in it isn't tupac in that <laughs> everyone's in it <laughs> that's the one time i've gotten uh listener mail read on how did this get made was reacting to nothing oh, but boy. trouble no way that's a good that's a that's a nice little achievement i asked uh paul if jason was more afraid of dan Aykroyd's dick nose or clowns <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a good that's good yeah I went with a movie that it's, I want to say it's kind of got a similar story, but not really. Uh -huh. um, but it didn't make me think of this movie. <laughs> I went with, uh, <laughs> I went with True Romance. Oh, because okay. at the end of the movie, it's two people that are in love. One okay. of them gets shot. They're on the run. Kind of. Uh, we should have had Christian Slater as Jonathan. Oh. There you go. <laughs> You're a loose cannon, Cody. <laughs> I would have been into that. This is going to be a mixed response, I know. But. <laughs> Do you guys recommend Under the Cherry Moon? I I would say yes, but with a caveat. Sure. I think if you are a huge Prince fan, it is worth checking out just to see what it's like. Because it's a, it is a very singular, strange movie. Um, if you're not super into Prince, then I think you're fine checking out some of like the the highlights. Like look up the uh, answering machine duet or the Recasto scene, and I think oh, you'll God. get a kick out of it. But it's. It is like a very meandering, weird movie that doesn't really work. And I have a lot of affection for it. Yeah, there's no connective tissue between those scenes, though. Sure. That's the problem. Yeah, for Nothing sure. Nothing connects on this movie. Uh, Malik? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Full send. Anything else or is that it? Nope. All right. Dustin, do you think people should watch Under the Cherry Moon? I, I can't <laughs> stress this enough. No! 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 <laughs> Wow, you had those ready. <laughs> no, I can't. Fair enough. I can't. That it's totally can't fine. <laughs> Sorry. This was, I felt like I was on ayahuasca watching this fucking movie because I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't, nothing. And I, I, I told you, I'm telling like, how you. How could you not like Prince trying to make Casablanca? Like, I was amazing. fighting. I was fighting to pay attention. I was struggling so hard to understand things. And I just didn't. And I thought 
is this me? Is this a reflection of me? Am I just not getting it? But I'm glad to know it wasn't. I'm not alone. No, I don't. I don't think you're wrong. Like, I think that I think that it's a bad movie, yeah. but that I enjoy quite a bit. And I don't think that you're wrong for not liking it. I don't think you're wrong. I just think you're incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I said, I get it. I get Prince. I understand. I respect him. Sure. I, I think he was a great musician. It's just not for me. Yeah. And this movie in particular is definitely <laughs> not for me. Yeah. I will say, I don't think this is even Prince's worst movie. I think Graffiti Bridge is is more oh, yeah. is significantly worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is almost unwatchable. But I do think this would be a fun group watch. Yes, I do. I think that would be fun to get drunk and watch this movie, play a drinking game. Like we all like we all just like get in the bath together. Throw, <laughs> throw it some on. Pedals. We each get individual baths. Put on our hats. Put on our hats. Individual baths. Yeah, we all get in our own little tubs. We line up around the TV. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into that. Who's going to put the rose petals in? Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for somebody to, to oh, okay. do the rose petals. I don't know. Yeah, we'll hire a rose man. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they exist in the yellow pages sure. under R. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure. You know what? We could get Moss to do it. Uh, yeah, he, he would do it. He for sure would do he it. He would definitely do it. But yeah, I, just, I can't. I can't in good faith. And hey, listener, if you've never seen the movie and you're you're brave enough to try it out go for it but just know that i warned you and i don't think it's available as a standalone Anywhere. blu-ray i had to buy it as part of a three disc set with prince's other two films mm -hmm. two out of three ain't bad as meatloaf once said <laughs> i will say though this movie has no opening production cards or anything it just fucking starts yeah which was kind of refreshing it's hey, just and it was under two hours it was very well under two hours but somehow still felt <laughs> incredibly long <laughs> like incredibly long but yeah i don't other than like like i said like a group watch or something i don't think i'll ever revisit this that's and fair. that's fine <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to not like a movie you didn't enjoy promising young women that much i yeah. don't enjoy this movie yeah and let's move on absolutely dc <laughs> next time i'm in la get that bath ready <laughs> <laughs> i'm planting the rose the rose garden now for you <laughs> we all have a night and make sure to put that pillow under his ass oh yeah he likes that <laughs> yeah i do like the i do like having the pillow under so you know be ready. Uh, guys, this was this was fun. Yeah, absolutely. It was fine. Feedback, though, listener, if you've seen Under the Cherry Moon and you just vehemently disagree with us, or if you do agree with us and you think you want to get your voice heard, email us at the Seven Linings playlist at Gmail uh, or uh, DM us on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Yeah. Uh, you can also follow us on all of those. We post on uh, Instagram and Twitter every day. Um, you can go over to our subreddit. There's a ton of information on there. Uh, Reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. And the absolute best thing you can do for us is to tell others about our show and subscribe and leave some feedback and, and a rating in the iTunes store or Spotify or wherever you're listening to this. Cause and maybe also tell them to start with a different episode than this one. And yeah. if you <laughs> if you were at that premiere in Wyoming, oh please tell us everything. Yeah. Oh, I have so many questions. <laughs> also. Mally, to, to respond to your point, uh, this episode doesn't exist. So <laughs> there That's you go. true. No, it's just going to skip from episodes 115 to 117 and no one's going to be any, any of the wiser. It's like when it's like when buildings don't have a 13th floor. Right. It's like, motherfucker. The ones on 14, they know what floor they really on. That's, that's the under the cherry moon floor from now on. That's what we that's have to right. refer to it as. <laughs> but all right, that's that's all. Is there anything we forgot to talk about or we just have to address before we get out of here? Uh, probably, but I don't know what it is. I think we nailed it. <laughs> I think yeah, so, too. Obviously, every, you know what? Jaded 3, pat yourselves on the back, guys. We fucking nailed this <laughs> Absolutely. One. I agree. Yay us. Well... Up next on the agenda uh, is a movie that I've selected for us, and I have a clue. Yeah. Uh, just so you know, we are getting completely whiplashed in terms of tone, because we're going to a very serious movie next week. Oh, boy. And the clue that I will leave you with is, they didn't cry until I left them. I didn't like that you got that close. Yeah. To the microphone. <laughs> that was, I'm so uncomfortable. Well, good. You should be uncomfortable. Yeah, Mally, that's what your thriller thing felt like. Okay, well, not on my end. <laughs> <laughs> um, so until next week, where we're talking about crying, uh, rest in peace, oatmeal. And as always, wreck a stone. Franklin Mary, I don't give a da -da 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 damn. Uh. <laughs> Excelsior! 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 Oh. Look it up!
wraps up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!